Listen, uh, there's so much that we can get into with Hustler Patterson with regards to the NFL and the Tom Brady news today that he's officially retiring. But Hustler, they all want your take as we bring him in from the highly popular Winnipeg Sports Talk. They want your take on the Jets. Our supposition yesterday that maybe it's time to uh, blow it up and deal some pieces off like Connor Hellebuck to the orders. Hustler, everybody thinks the season's over and it's time. Where are you on the Jets right now? Well, uh, Rod, what's up? Great to see you, and nice to see you back in your lovely southern headquarters after a week out there at the casino in uh, Calgary. Um, listen, you. it's been a terrible couple weeks for the Winnipeg Jets, and um, you know they went on, and you know, and, and the bigger piece is, I mean, really, since Dave Lowry took over in the middle of December, this team got shut down, didn't play a lot of games. I mean, the early results were actually fine. Uh, but then they went on a four-game road trip against some of the top teams in the East, managed only two points of a possible eight, and then had two brutal games at home um, in a basically empty building last week before uh, the win to finally snap the streak on Thursday after or on Saturday afternoon against the St. Louis Blues. Bottom line for the Winnipeg Jets is that it's the halfway point in the season, and they're two games above NHL 500. I mean, to get into that eighth wild card spot, we're talking about probably needing plus eleven plus 12 when it comes to wins to regulation losses. Um, but it's certainly not impossible. I mean, we're talking about the second half of the season here. So I do think it's jumping the gun right now to be talking about um, blowing things up, especially for a team that was really built, and this kind of leads to the Connor Hellebuck topic, was built around the next three seasons. You've got Connor Hellebuck signed until the end of two more years. Mark Scheifele, same thing. Blake Wheeler, same thing. A little bit more term for the likes of Nikolai Ehlers, who's out right now, and Kyle Connor, who is, of course, going to the All-Star game this weekend. So it's certainly too early to pull the pin, but it does mean that this team is under an incredible amount of pressure to get on a win and have a big month of February. Because if we get to the end of February and this team is still in a similar position, uh, you know, right around the 500 mark with four or five teams in between them for the final wild card spot. Kevin Shebeldayoff is going to have some decisions to make that I don't think anyone associated with the Winnipeg Jets thought were possible at the beginning of the season. We spent a lot of time talking about Andrew Kopp, who's an unrestricted free agent. He was the one guy that sort of was left out of uh, the offseason re-signing frenzy um, that by the time it got to Andrew Kopp, there wasn't enough to, to sign him to a long-term deal. And he's on a one-year deal with a pending UFA. And I've maintained all along, if we're talking about Andrew Kopp being traded this year, that's a very, very bad thing for the Winnipeg Jets. Well, they're almost there right now. Um, but as I said, we've got, what, six, seven weeks until the trade deadline. Still a lot of hockey left to be played. Um, the Jets showed a lot in that win against St. Louis on Saturday. Definitely need to beat the Philadelphia Flyers tonight and then come out of the All-Star break. Um, you know. Putting up some wins, Rod. Um, if that doesn't happen, we'll be talking about some trades. But mark my words, none of those trades will involve Connor Hellebuck. Sure. Well, what I'm getting from you is that it's too early. So maybe it's time to blow it up. Maybe this is the season, but just not right now. But what about this? I mean, Craig Button was on our show last week at Grey Eagle and said maybe Paul Maurice saw this coming, and that's why he pulled the pin. Like, uh, obviously, you guys have kicked that around, I'm sure, but that he jumped before he was pushed. Thoughts on that? Yeah, um, listen, I think there's probably a little bit of truth to it. I mean, Maurice said, essentially, that, you know, he figured he had taken this group as far as he could take them. Um, and, you know, hey, when you have that same voice in the room for eight years or just about eight years, um, you know, it's professional sports. We've seen the best coaches in history get fired or move on because things got a little stale. And, uh, you know, there's all sorts of adversity that this team has had this year, but that's not unique to the Winnipeg Jets. It's happening all around the league. And, you know, the longer we move away from the Maurice era, it is it is interesting. Um, but I think Dave Lowry had some big challenges on his hands to do some of the things that, frankly, Paul Maurice didn't do. And one of those things was to really establish a level of accountability in the team that ran from the bottom all the way to the top of the lineup. And um, you know, we've seen that. A lot of people expected Dave Lowry just to be Paul Marie's light or basically the same thing, coming from the same coach's room and not much changes. Um, Mark Scheifele spent the last five minutes of the Vancouver game on the bench and the last three and a half minutes of the game in St. Louis on Saturday on the bench. Mark Scheifele wears an A. Mark Scheifele is one of the most important and maybe the most important player on the team, to be honest, uh, when it comes to what will happen in, in, uh, in February. 
There's been a lot of times this year where he hasn't seemed very engaged. The points are there for the most part. The defensive zone has been, you know, a disaster at times. Um, and that's been a big problem for uh, for the Winnipeg Jets. I mean, uh, you know, Dave Lowry's pushing the buttons that he thinks he needs to make to get more out of Mark Shifley, to get more of that commitment because he knows what it means for the rest of the team. Um, as far as Maurice goes, I mean, I think he just sort of realized it was the end of the road. I sort of do agree. I mean, when you, if you heard Shevel Dayoff speak afterwards, it was clear that they'd had a number of conversations dating back to losing to Montreal in the playoffs. Um, that, you know, maybe it was time for a different voice or to move in a different direction. And then the team came out and had a 9-3-3 and start. And everyone thought, all right, this is the team that we expected. November into December was a real mess. Um, you know, it happened to the Jets. It certainly happened to the Edmonton Oilers as well. We've seen the Oilers put some wins together. It's time for the Winnipeg Jets to do the same if they want to salvage this season and have at least meaningful games being played into the end of November when GMs have to make those tough and final decisions at the deadline. Dan Asham watching in Winnipeg has a lot of comments and questions. He says Winnipeg sports talk rocks with Huss. I think number 55 has to step it up. What do you think? You just addressed that in Mark Shifley. So I'm going to switch this to football now. Before we even get to Tom Brady, you and your good buddy, Gary Lawless, travel to so many Super Bowls. Hustler and Lawless, I was always so jealous. And I'm finally going to be able to go to one this year in L.A. What's your best Super Bowl story has from your travels man and being on Rady row and stuff and maybe where you went <gasps> can't believe i'm in this guy's presence what what are your memories of that well you know what i mean honestly it's the best it's the i mean if you're in our business it is the the best week and it's the greatest opportunity to speak to people that frankly we would never normally get a chance to talk to um you know the list of nfl hall of famers that'll be rolling through radio row especially early on in the week before things get really crazy um, is amazing. I mean, for me as a lifelong Chiefs fan, still suffering from the game on Sunday, I mean, we had a chance to speak to uh, Christian Okoya, the Nigerian nightmare. That was a huge one for me. Um, Jerry Krause, Packers legend, came on the program. Um, but I mean, we spoke to Dan Marino at times. I mean, just some guys that, frankly, you would not normally get to. But I will tell you, Rod, by far the, the best thing about being around Super Bowl week is everything else that happens. And I will admit, at one point, I uh, did utilize some smooth talking and a press credential to get into uh, the Bud Light Hotel, where somebody brought me backstage to, to get me in. This was an outdoor, uh, a, sort of a semi-outdoor event. Uh, and I walk through the back, and I'm in the presence of a bunch of uh, hip-hop dancers, and I'm five feet away from Nicki Minaj, and rolled out into Ooh. this area, and the next thing you know, Nikki's out doing her thing in an exclusive party, and I'm like, I cannot. I'm here, and all the beer was free too, which was uh, which was nice that? as well. So, um, you know, there, there's there's so many neat things in and around it. But as someone you know like you, that you know is uh, well versed in so many different sports, but especially the National Football League. I mean, a good portion of the week is speaking with legends, active players, talking about the game. Um, but then there's all sorts of other media and especially in los angeles i mean i can't imagine the potential for people on the entertainment side of things i mean we had adam sandler on one time which was huge for us he was an absolute riot um but i think you'll see a ton of adam sandlers if you will taking the advantage to promote whatever the heck they're doing coming out of covid um on radio row at, the, at los angeles so uh i'm very happy for you guys and i'll be uh, paying close attention to your hijinks over the course of the week there in uh, southern california Thanks, Haas. Well, pretty quiet uh, for me these days. Just being there will be a lot of fun. We are out of time. I apologize, but Haas, thanks. Give a plug to Winnipeg Sports Talk for our viewers, if you don't mind. You bet it. Right after the RP show, actually, every day, we get going at 1 o'clock Central. Uh, same place if you're watching on YouTube uh, with Rod. Just put in Winnipeg Sports Talk, hit the sub button, and uh, of course, you can uh, search Winnipeg Sports Talk on all your favorite podcasts, too. We usually get it up just in time for the drive home here in Winnipeg and Southern Manitoba. Keep killing it, buddy. Good, uh, good chatting with you. Thanks, pal. Hustler Patterson from Winnipeg Sports Talk joining us from the Slurpee Capital. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching the RP Show on YouTube. And don't forget, we're live daily on YouTube from noon to 2 Eastern. If you like what you see, hit subscribe. And if you like the program, check around for other segments of The Rod Peterson Show here on YouTube.